All right, it is August 13th, 2024, bringing you a Lake of the Ozarks fishing report. Yeah, it's been a few weeks again. Um, just not a whole lot has changed until the last week or so. So, um, you know, we always we want to keep you up to date as, as things are changing and not just kind of give you the same old, same old every week, you know, when things ain't changing. So, obviously, they have changed quite a bit this last week or so. Our, our water temps have dropped. Oh, four or five degrees, probably. You know, we're, uh, I'm still going to say uh, upper 70s, 79 to 84, probably. You know, we've had some cool nights, uh, almost like September stuff already. You know, some fog in the morning, um, you know, 50, 56 degrees the other night or other morning. So, you know, that's all it takes to get these fish really kind of starting to think, believe it or not, fall's coming. No, it's not here yet. We're still summer, but um, as we get these cool nights and, and cool downs, um, we're starting to see a lot of shad push towards the backs. Um, a lot of shad are still main lake, um, big creeks, major creeks um, in the middle, midway, um, and a lot of them are, are kind of milling around in the very backs too. So you kind of got everything going on, and, and that's what we've been doing for the last what do you think, two weeks? Yeah. Probably two weeks is, we've just been mixing up. Rather, we're out fishing, uh, fishing a tournament, uh, on trips, you know. It really doesn't matter. We just kind of, we switch it up. Um, you know, whatever we got to do to get bites and catch fish. Um, yeah, if, if you're fishing for, um, oh, I would say tournament size, quality fish, you know, three and a half or better. Um, sometimes you might do a little bit different than if you're just going out for numbers, you know, mm -hmm. um, obviously there's, there's uh, ways of catching fish. Uh, if you just want to go catch fish and have a lot of fun and a chance of maybe catching one or two good ones, or you just want to spend a day, um, you might spend eight hours and get six to 10 bites, mm -hmm. but they're all good quality fish. Or you may go spend four or six hours um, and catch 30 or 40 fish. So you can see the big difference. Uh, but your 30 or 40 fish, you know, you might catch five keepers out of 30 or 40. You know, to be honest, where uh, if you're fishing for those six to 10, they're all keepers. You know, so that's kind of how, you know, um, things are right now. And it'll probably be the same. I'm going to say through September, you know, before we get another big change. So, you know, uh, the lake level is 659.2. So it's still, it's still full. Um, they're not really generating a much, much water. Every once in a while, they'll, they'll generate a little bit, but it's not really having a, a big effect, you know. Um, you know, water color. Now that's, that's a little different. You know, lower end's really really clean, really good looking. Uh, but you were saying, uh, where do you think it changes? The water color, maybe up above racetrack. Yeah. Link Creek, uh, you know, above Link Creek on up the river, it's kind of got, uh, I don't want to say kind of a, a dirty iced tea. It's kind of a little goofy kind of, and I'm not sure why we really ain't had a lot of rain, a lot of runoff. Nothing to really change that. Um, you know, I mean, water temp, yeah, it's cooling down, but it hasn't like that drastic change where it might kill off a lot of, um, you know, of the planktons or algae or whatever it does that, you know, um, creates a big water change. But either way, we've got good water color, different, dirtier water. Uh, once you get, say, a hurricane deck on up, it's pretty dirty. You know, at least stained, heavily stained. You know, uh, up the Nine was been in the Nine was a little bit uh, over a week or so ago, and it's pretty good, pretty solid color. Um, nothing crazy there, just slightly stained. Um, <clears throat> maybe I don't know, eighteen two foot visibility there. You know, um, but then the lower end, it's it's pretty clean. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, fish did a lot this week. Fish did today. And I'm gonna say two to three foot at least, you know. And a, and the grab voice is about the same, you know. So pretty pretty normal for this this uh, time of year, you know. Um, 
as far as catching fish, man, we've had um, several trips the last, uh, well, I'll say two weeks. We'll just go with that. Um, and they've, they've been all over the place. You know, I was up in Hurricane Deck. Um, had a lot of young young anglers. When I say young, you know, 14 to 18. Um, and, man, I'm impressed with a lot of them, just, just how uh, in tune they are with in fishing. Um, hey, Chloe. <laughs> you know, in tune with fishing and gear and electronics and a placement of baits and and switching it up and you know they're casting they're flipping it's um it's pretty encouraging to see uh when you got a lot of lo young anglers um that are, are really um you know encouraged and enthused about about fishing and i personally i don't it don't really bother me what's bringing them to the fishing industry whether it be the the nice boats or the time on the water um Live scope, the electronics, which plays a huge part in today's, you know, uh, today's youth, youth with their, their phones and their uh, computers and laptops. And of course, that just, uh, you know, stems right into your electronics on your boat. Whatever, whatever it takes uh, to keep our young anglers encouraged and enthused, um, so be it, you know. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll power, you know, to it, you know. Uh, the live scope, you know, I know we've beaten that to death, the, the yeah. controversy over it. And there's, there's stuff going on on different levels. But, you know, if, if it if it helps you fish and it helps you catch fish, you know, or, or see what they're doing, I'm all for it. Right. You know, if you don't like it and you don't use it, yeah. turn it off. Can you still compete? My opinion is, yeah. You just got to keep your head down and, and fish hard and, and fishing away. It's just a different way of fishing. And that's right. kind of interesting because sometimes a lot of the, the younger anglers, even even our grandson Jackson, does look at, because mm -hmm. if you if you direct his attention to that live scope and the screen, he'll talk about it. And some of our guide trips, they'll, they'll look yeah. at it and we'll talk about it. But there's been several other trips where where you just basically don't even don't even talk about it with them and it's just it it, it right. just kind of varies right. depending it's on just who kind you of have. whatever um mm -hmm. sparks someone's interest you know our grandson he's seven so yeah. that tells you there you know he he um we were out with him today but mm -hmm. you know like i said we had several young anglers uh last week uh and man they can fish they can put the bait where it needed to be um work it the way it needed to be they were real um you know, they, they listen real good. And, and, you know, if you can give someone a little bit of instruction sometimes, man, it'll go a long way, especially if they have an open mind, regardless regardless who it is, you know. But um, either way, um, had some great trips. Uh, Denise had some great trips. Had a group of ladies come down, uh, took their annual trip, and then another mm -hmm. yeah. uh, family took out. But, uh, you know, just, just good trips all around. This is a great time of year. Um, you know, the, the lake is, is still fairly busy on the weekends, but during the week, a lot of schools are back in, in session, uh, colleges, uh, people are just winding down, sports are starting to happen, so people are uh, staying at home, at least during the week, you know, but uh, the lake's coming down. Um, we got the shootout. Yeah, the, the fish are, are... Shootout in two weeks. You yeah, know, but, yeah, different you know. things, you know, will, will bring people down here uh, on the weekends, but during the week, um, it's been been a lot lot calmer a lot slower you know but that and it helps the fishing as far as you can fish a little longer we can do a six hour trip did a couple eight hour trips you know but um the the fish are really feeding and they're they're feeding everywhere like i said so uh we're able to go out and work out able to go out and just catch a lot of numbers um and then also go catch some quality fish too you know so you know last week um and and what's today wednesday Tuesday. Tuesday so last week or two you know we've been throwing a lot of uh, the, the cool down and the cloudier days every once in a while uh, but something just sparks these fish and the top water bites uh, really start going on I know you've been throwing top water quite a bit what you've been throwing and where what have you been keying on and what you've been throwing it at uh, been keying on the on the shad and I, I believe that that's a big indicator right there. Uh, depending on, you know, visibly, we were out, we were, uh, we were uh, lower, lower end, 
and there was about a six mile, uh, a six foot gap, six mile gap between the bank and a line of shad that you could see. Mm -hmm. So that shad and the and the activity that we're beginning to see only for for me sparks uh, top water. Right. And, and I know uh, people will ask because yeah. it's a common deal. You know, we got whatever thirteen hundred miles of, of shoreline. So what are you looking for as far as the bank? Does it matter, you know, the, the size of rock or, or pea gravel or points or secondary points or, you know, what, if someone's coming down, what are you gonna, where do you start keying on and what do you, how long until you switch? Well, I, 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 um, a lot of times to me, it feels like it depends on the size of the cove depending on where those shad are gonna be. So if you're in a shorter cove, you're gonna have the shad, I would believe the shad are gonna be from the beginning of that cove all the way to the back. Almost I think filling up that almost whole Almost filling thing. up that whole, that whole little small mm -hmm. cove. You get in your bigger creeks, I think that's where you have to be a little more selective to your secondaries mm -hmm. or halfway back, your secondaries are all the way in the back. But That's, I do believe yeah. visibly you can see the shad either, either visibly you can see them or you can see them working. And I think that's that big factor for me is where the shad is, is where my bait's gonna be. Right, so, and that's a good point. When, uh, when you've got a shorter cove, more main lakey cove, um, they're gonna, if the shad are working that area, it might be a, a channel swing and it swings through uh, from point to point of that cove, them, them shad will come up and they'll, they'll kind of filter into that big pocket cove and fill up the whole thing where you can take a top water, whether it be a chug bug, a chopo, a, a crocodile buzz bait, spook, whatever, and start on a point and work the whole thing and probably have a potential mm -hmm. of catching fish anywhere compared to uh, if you're going in a major creek, now you're going to have to be a little more conscious of or to shad more towards the mouth of this creek, maybe towards mid midway back in the creek at the mouths or points of these second little creeks that feed, little feeder creeks, or, or you got some shad in the very back. So you got to pay attention yeah. to that a little bit, a little bit more. What's, uh, what top water have you been throwing more so you think? Uh, this, uh, this particular bait, I gotta be real honest, I'm gonna be throwing it for a really good while here. I've got, I've, this is a Berkeley Chapo. It is their 120, uh, series. It has right out of the package. This is ready to, ready to go. It's got good beefy hooks mm -hmm. and I'm throwing this to the bank and just bringing it, bringing it back. Uh, bringing it back to the boat. I kind of vary my retrieve a little bit. I slow it down, speed it up, depending on what the bites are, are kind of showing me. Yeah. Um, I will tell you that this is also a great bait, you know, when you're, it, it, the, the docks, the docks is, uh, is kind of beginning to, it's going to begin. So if, if you've got yourself in the back and you've got some docks, well, the, the, that shad, the shad line and the shad that I'm talking about, you're going to have to throw this maybe in spots where you don't want to. You can always throw it on the bank and bring it back, but then you've also got, you need to get this bait under the cables, under those catwalks, and bring it back to the boat as if there's nothing there. Right, especially it's on, gonna keep your, on a sunny day where they're going to relate to a shadow, a shadow line. Yeah. Um, you know, they'll, they'll work from the deep part of the dock all the way to the bank, but they'll stay on that dock and then they'll stay underneath them catwalks. Mm -hmm. They don't really want to come out, you know, um, and obviously if you got a fishing pressure, um, and just naturally for a bass, the, they want something above their head, whether it be a catwalk, a dock, you know, a jet ski lift, whatever it is. So they're going to hold tight, tighter to those docks. On a sunny day, which is going to go along with your your jig flipping too, but right. uh, on a cloudy day, overcast day, um, you can almost just run a bank. You know, bigger rock, uh, rock with the uh, the big key is these older uh, riprap banks or 
ledgy stuff or bigger rock that's got this real thick green moss on it. And as long as they keep the water up where it's at and they don't pull it out, you've got a lot of moss that's underneath those rocks and on those rocks. And all that does is attract shed like, you know, squirrels are attracted to hickory trees and acorn trees. They just, they go there, they're eating that moss and that's what brings the shad up there, the bass know it, then the bass get up there and they start feeding on them. And until, as long as they keep the water where it's at, that's going to be productive from now, man, through October and November. So the top water is just starting, um, but catching enough fish on it yes. yeah. to throw it. And what, and what a great place for the fish to ambush the shad because they can't go any further into the the bank because the water obviously stops so it's it's a great place for the fish to come behind you know mm -hmm. like come up and come behind those shad and push them towards the bank it, right it which means seems... obviously the um placement of your bait uh especially top water that it's <laughs> thrown right on the bank uh, a lot of times these bass will hang out there just out of sight just where you can't see the bottom. So a lot of times that might be three, four, five foot off of the bank and the bass are hanging out there. And if your bait hits there, three foot off the bank, you're hitting on top of the fish, you're spooking them. Right. It's not that ambush like she's talking about, but if you throw on the rocks, right at the rocks, and as soon as that bait hits, you're retrieving it off of that bank. Now that's as if a big shed is coming off of that bank and that's what gets some fish's attention and that's what gets them to hit that Mm. that top water so just yeah. be conscious about that uh where you're throwing it you know i know you don't want to get hung up but uh believe me you've got to throw on them rocks tick them rocks sometimes make that little disturbance right on the bank like the big shed and then you get that headed out that's when them big fish are going to come up and react on it you know compared to if you're hitting you know five three two foot off of the bank you want to throw right on the bank um, with any of these baits, um, different days, different top water seems to be more productive. She's got a storm chug bug. You hear us talking about chug bugs a lot. We throw them a lot. Um, what's the other here? We got a crock gator, three quarter ounce head knocker buzz bait. Um, little, the uh, obviously a lot of sound with hitting the the head. Um, a lot of splashing in the water. A little faster retrieve, and then you've got the Chapo down there, which the Chapo is, is really productive because you can throw it, like she said, in some spots under these catwalks and you throw it in there under that catwalk and you can kind of get yourself positioned uh, and ready for a strike, get the boat in position and that thing's sitting there floating, you know, five, six foot on the other side of that catwalk and then you can start retrieving it and then you know, you're in position and then you can retrieve it. It hasn't sunk to the bottom. Um, you know, the, the rings from hitting the water have dissipated and now you got this thing coming underneath that catwalk or by the corner of a dock and um, that's what gets them to react, you know, is, is that steady retrieve through and past where they're setting up uh, to ambush, you know, right. bait fish. So, and, we, and we've all, and there isn't anything more exciting than getting underneath that catwalk, bringing it through and then you've got a cable I don't know how many times you, you you do that pendulum swing off of that cable and right when it hits back in the water, you can get a bite. And it happens with all of these. It happens a lot because yes. uh, believe it or not, them cables, you know, they're only half or three quarter inch uh, round cable. And those things, you know, go right on the surface of the water, maybe just underneath there. And them bass will hang under those cables mm -hmm. just like they'll hang under a tree branch or catwalk or dock corner. And that's why you bring it underneath, uh, up to them cables, bring it over that cables, that's when them bass will come up. So yeah, those cables place. are, you might as well consider them as, as primary cover in this, in this water, oh, yeah. especially yeah. the ones that go right at the surface oh, right of below. the water, or maybe mm -hmm. just below, maybe three, four, eight inches below that surface. Those cables, those bass hang under them cables and they get behind them and they think they're hidden 
and and they'll use those cables. And as, they really are because you don't. Yeah, you right. don't know they're there till they. <laughs> and like she said, a lot of the bites will come either on them catwalks or over the top of or around those cables or around dock corners or shallow corners, um, lay downs, odd lay downs, um, you know, in the backs of these flats or even out on these points, these little oh, yeah. indentations of a, a seawall, you know, with that water up, a lot of water is on a seawall. So a seawall is a great place yeah. just to throw the, uh, the top waters because there's always a footing from seawalls. Sometimes they stack rocks up there to help the erosion. You know, when the water's down, they'll stack rocks up there. So there's a lot of odd rocks there. And then the seawall, plus the seawall is kind of a vertical um, piece of structure. Moss grows on it. Bluegill get up in there. Shag get up in there. It's just a, that, a natural place. Yeah, and that, <laughs> then the capsulated foams, the, the foam that's mm -hmm. underneath those catwalks mm -hmm. or holding... Holding on to those cables, the, yeah, the it's foam just another that's good on. ambush mm -hmm. yeah. point, you know. So, you know, the top water we've been throwing them. Uh, she's got the one she's been throwing. I pretty much I've got the exact same three quarter ounce crack hitter head knocker. I've got a chopo on here with the with the cover on it, <clears throat> but I do have a spook on here. You know, spook's real similar to your chopo. Um, you can throw it, um, and I just I just like the one knock spook. Uh, this is just a good old faithful bone color. You see, I've taken a marker and put me some little red gills, gills on there to make it look a little more lifelike. Uh, I've replaced the hook with some good uh, gamgatsus. Uh, that might be mustad, ultra points. But either way, I replaced the hooks with that. Um, and then, you know, spooks are good bait. You can throw to the bank and and work it real aggressive for about two foot and stop it. And then start it again, and that's a lot of times when a fish will hit it, when you vary the retrieve. <clears throat> Sometimes, on any of these top waters, you can just throw it out and retrieve it. But a lot of times, you'll find, and we've found, if you vary that retrieve, like even on a steady retrieve for eight foot, on say a chopo buzz bait, um, or even a spook, and you you steady, good steady retrieve, and then you stop it, and then you speed it up. Or you just give it a little, a little uh, quick twitch. That's what gets them to trigger the bite. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of like a crankbait a lot of times, or a spinnerbait. You can't really necessarily just throw it out and reel it in. You got to give them little twitches, little pulses, um, something a little different, just to get these fish to re to react. You know, so just so uh, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, but you know, your top water, like I said, it's kind of starting. Uh, it's been going on for a couple weeks. Um, and it's only going to get better uh, and better in the September, all through September, all through October, November. Uh, we usually say, oh, Thanksgiving's about the peak of top water. And it kind of starts going down as that water cools. But we're nowhere near that right now. So It just changes your arsenal of what you have on your deck. It seems right. like we're getting a little more top water than we are some of the other baits. Yep. So this yeah. is... Uh, she said the 120. This is the 120 Berkeley Chapo. Um, you've got your Whopper Poppers, you know, um, you know, back prop style baits, you know, real similar, but they do make different sounds, um, different actions. So uh, di different colors, you know, um, you yeah, know, on the top your, Even your one knock spook, you've got your um, mm -hmm. cane walker made by Berkeley. And you've got, right, you your, got the uh, green, your sexy dog, you uh, know, so you, uh, evergreen. Evergreen makes that gunfish. Mm -hmm. That's a really good top water. Throws a lot, makes a lot of action. Um, got that tungsten weight in the back of it. Mm -hmm. Those are good top water. All these top waters are going to catch fish. Yeah. Um, just different days, uh, different pressure. Where you're fishing has a lot to do with where you, what top water you're going to want to throw, you know. Rather behind the cables, catwalks, around shallow brush, um, <clears throat> on the flats, laydowns, dock corners, whatever. All these can, are real good different patterns to try as you're trying. Yeah. You know, even a main lake point, big uh, riprap rock, that's that's a, a pattern cover of its own. You know, when that's a little more when the shad get up there and start really working the bank, which there are some up there, a lot of bluegill up there right now. Um, there's bluegill 
uh, spawn going on right now uh, in the very backs. So that's why some of these flats can get real good. Uh, but some of these bluegill will spawn right up in them in those rocks too. So, you know, uh, <coughs> that's pretty much top water stuff. Uh, then we, uh, some other baits that we're throwing, mainly just to get bites a lot of times, is like your Zoom Super Fluke. Uh, there's a lot of different colors. We like something in a, in a shad color. Usually a pearl, a glimmer blue, they call it. Um, there's different ones. Uh, I like to be able to see the bait working. I like to see that I'm working it right. I like to see where it's at because a lot of times that bait will just disappear. You know, so the, the pearl is kind of our go-to. Um, and I rig that. It's weightless. I rig it on 8 or 10 pound test. Uh, that way that, that weightless bait will cast easy. And then it works real freely. You know, you put too heavy a bait, uh, line on a bait like this. It just kills the action. You know, this is a, a lighter action rod. This is actually a jerk bait rod, pretty light tip on it. You know, um, the reel, not real important on the reel as far as gear ratio. It doesn't really matter because you're kind of working it like you would a stick bait, uh, but it's a soft plastic. Um, I'll kind of show you the, the setup we use for this. And this is a 5 uh wide gap hook. So, uh, Gamagatsu, Mustad, uh, Owner, Eagle Claw. So, this is your 5 aught wide gap hook, and you got your fluke, okay? So, you go through the nose uh, like you would any plastic, and you want to do it on the side that's got the, the slit on the bottom of it, okay? And that's about a half, 5 eighths inch in that nose. So, you go in there, and you bring the hook out before it starts the split and you run it up there just like you would any uh, Texas rig bring it up turn it around and now you can see it like this it's upside down it's got the grooves and now you take this number four treble hook and slide it on that number five hook okay now it's that's hanging on there and now you go ahead and run your your point through that fluke and bring it up to the surface of it just pinch it in like that, and it's critical that it's straight. It's nice and straight. You don't want to kink in it. You don't want to bend in it because this bait is, is weightless. It's soft plastic. You want to throw that thing out there, let it sink down out of sight, and just twitch it up. Twitch it fast. Twitch it slow. Long sweep. Let it sit there. And, or just, you know, just, just give that thing a lot of action. You'll see that thing darting around. And that treble hook hanging on there, when you stop that bait, it slides to the front. It helps that weightless bit, uh, bait go down a little bit, almost swim down. And then you start uh, twitching it, jerking it back up, and the hook goes back to the back. It rattles on there. And these fish that come out from underneath these docks or come up from deeper water or off a shallow corner, they come out and swipe at that bait, and that treble hook gets them. So that's a key way to set that fluke up. This, this bait right now is probably producing more fish than any other bait right now. For numbers, you can't beat a fluke from now till November, you know. So that's that setup. Um, throw that thing around any, any docks, dock corners. Uh, wind is real important. If you got the wind pushing on that dock, throw past that corner into the wind and bring that bait with the wind just like a wind would be pushing shad or or, you know, uh, naturally fish will set up on them corners. You know, if you get a dock in a creek, main lake, that's sticking a little bit further out than the rest of them, that's where he's going to be. If you can get one up current uh, on a shady side and a windy side, that's that's money there. So the fluke is a really good bait. Um, and you'll catch, you'll catch keepers on it all the time. I mean, we catch a lot of keepers on it. Um, but a lot of... Uh, 13, uh, 16 inch fish, I'd say, on, on the fluke, sure. you know. Um, other baits, uh, we're starting to throw them, uh, like a chatterbait. At chatterbait, same deal, a lot of vibration, a lot of reaction. Uh, it's just rigged up with a little swim bait. I think that's a reaction innovation on the back of a Picasso uh, chatterbait. Uh, but that's, you're going to throw this anywhere. I mean, this thing can be thrown like a spinnerbait. Um, I mean, up to the bank, work it off the bank, 
throw it on corners of docks, alongside docks, uh, lay downs. I mean, chatterbait's kind of a all around uh, good water covering bait. You know, you can throw it everywhere. Uh, it creates a lot of bites when fish aren't necessarily feeding. So um, that's, a, that's a bait you can just go down the bank and throw it at every single piece of cover, whether it be rocks, lay downs, cables, corner, shallow corners, deep corners, um, way breaks, I don't care what it is, you can throw the chatterbait by it. Um, and that's that's coming on pretty good right now. Um, and it's only gonna get better too. So it's a good bait. You can uh, tie on and just go fish with it all day and, and probably catch plenty of fish. And it'll it'll create some some good uh, good bites. Another thing with a chatterbait, you can throw it out there in, in ten foot of water and let that thing sink to the bottom and rip it off to the bottom like you would a spoon or a big jig and really get that thing vibrate off the bottom and let it kill it again. Almost fish it like a spoon um, and try to get them reaction bites. You know, because you you got that vibration, you got the swim bait on the back, you got a lot of stuff going on that. Uh, you know, it's, it's another bait you don't necessarily just want to throw it out and reel it in steady all the time. You want to reel it in, stop it, twitch it, you know, speed it up, slow it down, let it go to the bottom, jerk it off the bottom. Uh, you can just work it a lot of different ways. So I think, you know, obviously that's what makes the chatterbait so productive. Um, it'll bounce off cover real good. So a chatterbait's a good bait, you know, right now um, and then for the next couple months, you know, chatterbait's going to be good. Uh, glide baits, starting to throw some glide baits a little bit, getting a little bit of reaction on it. You know, this is the um, KGB Chad Shad. Uh, this is in the shad color. Uh, it's my favorite favorite one. Um, obviously, you got to throw it on heavy tackle, heavy line, heavy rod, uh, and and that's another one. You don't. There's no. Um, I'd say right. Only way to throw that thing. You can throw it out there, and you can just reel your handle, you know, and get that thing just darting around. You can turn your handle a couple times and stop it, and let it glide real quick. You can let it sink. You can reel it fast up back up to the surface. There's a lot of different ways you can throw this. I mean, you just kind of got to experiment and see what the fish are wanting. You know, obviously this is a big bait, big shad imitator. Uh, as we progress a little further uh, towards the fall. That's going to be a, a good key bait. Um, we'll talk more about that probably as it is more productive, but we're starting to throw it already a little bit. Um, what else are you throwing there? Shaky head? What are you doing with the shaky head? Where are you throwing it? Shaky head. That is, um, that's around, around the docks. That's also getting, I've got just a quarter ounce set up, uh, quarter ounce shaky head with a, um, worm on here. You can vary your that's just, what is that? That's a finesse worm. Finesse worm, like yeah. 10 foot brush. Yeah, 10 foot and, and uh, looking for brush. Also, again, look, kind of looking for the shad and looking for, I mean, this particular bait can be thrown on those corners of the docks and uh, and swimming those to boat the, slips, probably. you know, your boat slips. Yeah, so this is uh, definitely, definitely. I can't where people maybe have, uh, Crappy brush piles where they drop brush around their dock. It's just a good right. uh, late summer, early fall pattern. You know, just flip it. You can flip it shallow mm -hmm. docks, deeper docks, but right. don't you usually throw that maybe okay. 12, 8 to 12, even probably more 6 to 12 foot of water. 6 to 12, and I'd probably mm -hmm. go, I'd go that, that uh, like your 5 sixteenths, mm -hmm. a little heavier if I'm fishing a little bit deeper. And uh, or if I have you know some wind or anything yeah. like that playing into it, so uh, I always kind of try to start with the quarter with the quarter ounce. Yeah, as long as you yeah. can feel it. If not, you want to feel that bait. So a five sixteenths is a good all around, you know. Um, and you know, you obviously you're throwing that on a medium heavy. This is seven foot yeah. rod. Um, that's a Bass Pro Pro Qualifier uh, seven five to one. Just kind of a all around reel, Very fifteen pound test. You're ready to go. Yep. Yep. Uh, other baits. Let's see. Uh, obviously, the jig. The jig's playing a big part here lately. A couple different ways. Um, I've got one here set up for swimming a jig. Uh, this is just a 
a half ounce zapper, you know, with a just a single tail trailer uh, jig on the back, uh, plastic on the back. But I say um, swimming, and it's set up with an eight to one lose hypermag reel. Good casting reel. I mean, it'll cast a long way. So when I'm swimming these docks, I'm making longer casts all the way up to the front, letting it sink down below them that foam, and and letting it. Just below that foam and reel that thing steady along that foam, stop it, kill it, let it sink a little bit, start it back up. A lot of times that'll pull fish out, uh, work these corners with it. Um, but you gotta have, you want a reel that will a good easy cast. Um, I usually throw this on 12, 15 pound test on that, half ounce jig. A half ounce jig will work better because it obviously will cast better, but it'll sink down. You can reel a little faster without it coming to the surface quite as quick it'll stay down there just below that foam um that's good for working uh the corners of docks kill it let it sink down uh, along by the braces the cables uh anywhere you might be looking at your live scope and see fish uh hanging on these cables on these corners uh brush piles you know shallow corners you can throw it to a shallow dock and just swim it along uh alongside boat lifts in these open slips alongside the uh, outside of these dock and just swim that thing like you would a crankbait, a little square bill, you know. Um, square bills, you know, obviously will produce right now too, but usually like we always say, if you catch one on a jig, you usually can get them in, in the boat. You know, he, he's yeah. hooked yeah. and he's coming in, but that's one of my favorite uh, patterns in from now through probably October, early October, is just swimming a jig alongside these docks and different retrieves, you know, um, just works really good. Only, you know, only thing I want to uh, mention is when you're letting that jig drop, the only thing that I think I want to mention do, doing that is be careful to not have too much, make sure you have good contact with that jig mm -hmm. because they're going to hit it, they're going to aggressively hit it on the fall and if you have too much slack line out, that's, yeah. you're not going to be able to that's real, get that hook set. Really, really in critical um, aspect of swimming a jig when you kill it. Exactly what she said was you want that line tight, okay, all the way. When you kill it and let it sink, you want that rod tip up and you want that line tight and drop your rod tip at the same speed as that jig's falling. So that line is consistent either tight or just a slight sag in it and you watch that line because if that line just goes limp that fish just ran out and grabbed it at eight foot and you're in 25 foot of water you know or you'll, you'll see that line twitch or it takes off to one side so line watching is huge uh, if you throw it up there and you got slack line that thing's sinking you can't see that line he's gonna run up grab it chew it a couple times he's gonna spit it out and you ain't never gonna know it so you got to have that line tight, semi-tight, and watch that jig fall all the way down until you decide to bring it up. And a lot of times the sinks down, and as soon as you turn and start bringing it up, that's when they'll chase it up and grab it. <clears throat> it's leaving. It's getting it's away. Getting away. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that is a critical uh, uh, tip, I guess, on, on working and swimming a jig. you got to watch that line. Yeah. <clears throat> and then my other jig setup. Uh, which is uh, another one of my favorite. This is just a seven foot falcon, medium heavy, 15 pound fluorocarbon, seven five to one Bass Pro. This is my flipping reel. <coughs> like I said, it will flip great. Um, it's good for about 20 yard flip. Uh, it don't cast very good. It's not the best casting reel, but it's the best flipping reel I've found for uh, not overriding. Um, you know, and not giving me a whole lot of trouble when I'm going to flip all day. This this is my setup for there. There you're just going to want a half ounce uh, Zapper Jig, Ozark Crawl. Uh, and Ozark Crawl. Ozark Crawl. And Ozark Crawl. Brown Purple Scale. <laughs> Those are my two favorite. I usually rig them up with a variety of trailers. This is a net bait. Pack a chunk. Got a lot of kicking uh, movement to it. You know, you want to imitate them shad. We've got all kinds of other baits out now. Uh, this is a bait cave brush beater. This thing is similar to, I would say like a 
<coughs> a sweet beaver. Um, let's see, what else was it? That uh, was the other one that's. Anyway, more of us. Like a menace. A glide bait. Uh, they flip and they skip extremely well. The way they're shaped, they're flat. Uh, just rigged it like this purple June bug on the black of this brown purple scale. Perfect setup. Um, you know, and it skips and they slide in there real good. And then when you kill it or let it sink, it just kind of kind of falls irregular, like a kind of like a tube would. You know, that that's the uh, brush feeder by a uh, bait cave. That's an excellent one. Uh, then you've got the cave cricket. Now this is real similar body, so it still skips, but it's got more of a kick and tail on it, or kick and tail, kick and legs on it, um, that it's going to kick and it's going to move, similar to like the Pekka Chunk. Uh, the Pekka Chunk, I like it, but they, they tear up pretty easy. This, this Cave Cricket holds up real well, kicks real good, skips real good. It's got a good body, sticks out past that jig a lot. So that Cave Cricket... Um, is becoming one of my favorites to, to flip. Uh, we also got this, Bojangles makes one that uh, I like it when it's a, a bigger, I want a bigger profile, beefier jig, uh, beefier body, more of a swimming uh, action on your, uh, on your, on your legs on it. I never know what to throw, what to call these, pinchers, legs, trailers, I'm, I'm going to have to say legs. legs. We're going with legs, all right, for the the things that hang off on these jigs. So you got swimming legs, kicking legs, gliding legs, <laughs> whatever legs we got. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, this would be real good for swimming a jig because it's got it's more of a swimming tail. You see that kind of a sim swimming tail on there. Um, but, you know, just the changing up of your trailers a lot of times can mean the difference of catching – Active fish, not active fish. Um, you know, they get in these crazy moods. And sometimes you just got to switch up on your trailers. Um, the action, um, more so the action than the color, I think, sometimes um, is going to trigger you a bite. So maybe maybe try so many different baits. Switch it up, you know. Um, you know, uh, you got the Rage Tail, or the, yeah, the Strike King uh, Rage Menace. They've got two sizes of this. You got the um, Rage Menace and then the Menace Magnum. So, you know, obviously those have more of a slender body, um, but they've got some really good, um, kind of an in between, like uh, the Cave Cricket and the Bait by Bojangles. Uh, you know, they get that more of a slender body and a, and a light, light kicking, uh, even tail, uh, even legs. That's it, the legs. Yeah. Um, so it's a different bait, uh, but it definitely, um, you know, will we'll trigger the bite. So, you, you know, in the fall, a lot of times uh, I throw the same jig. I'm going to throw a half ounce zapper jig regardless, yeah. um, you know, for, for a lot of reasons. You know, obviously the head for skipping the head. Um, I can I can flip a crocketer jig. I can swim a crocketer jig. I don't have to switch up jigs, you know, if I'm gonna swim it, work it through brush, work it through rocks. But the trailer, that's what what we're switching up in the fall, you know. Uh, same thing, docks around docks, shad, um, lay downs, um, you know, brush piles. Working in these shallower brush piles as these fish move up shallow. There's fish deep. Um, but, uh, uh, and it uh, seems like to me, these fish that are 12 foot less, 10 foot less, those are your fish that are up there feeding. They're already kind of starting to aggressive. feed yeah. a little more aggressive, you know, chasing these shad, you know, um, so, you know, obviously that's kind of what we're targeting. Most of our fish are 15 foot and less right now. Uh, it seems like you either catch them halfway back in creeks. Uh, throwing like a shaky head uh, or a worm, um, you know, letting it sink down maybe in some of this brush uh, alongside some of these docks. If the shad are in the middle of the creek, halfway back, work them docks, them corners of docks, work them braces, those cables. Um, just uh, a lot of times if the, if the shad are 
halfway back in the creek, instead of fishing right in the middle of them shad, I'm going to go right before them or right after them, right at the edges of them, of those sheds. Seems like where the bass kind of um, set up. I kind of think this, the bass work together and they corral these, these, these shad and they almost make a line and they'll keep them packed in there or they'll keep them pushed out, whatever it is. And they, they kind of keep a line. That, that's where I think the bass Seems smart. set up and fish. Obviously there's some out there in the middle of them. Right. But the majority of them seem to be at the edges, in the front edge or back edge of the shed. So that's kind of how I approach it, you know, a lot. Um, man, I don't know what else we can tell you right now. Um, you know, it's it's a, obviously they're feeding on crawfish, they'll feed on crawfish. But it seems like the shad uh, presence is is starting to be more of a factor and... I know it's only mid-August, but the later we go, the more shad are going to bunch up and school up and start working these bigger creeks or these coves. There's a lot of them working main lake, channel swings, channel um, edges where as it goes down the bank. On main lake, there's a lot out there. There's a lot of just scattered shad. There's a lot of them in the very center of major creeks. You know, um, so that's just telling us there's a lot of sad starting to move, starting to migrate, starting to bunch up. So that's just means fall's coming. Um, and yeah, obviously we're looking forward to that. You know, the crappie, you know, I know we ain't talked a lot about crappie. Um, we don't fish a lot in the summer for crappie, to be honest. We just don't, you know. Um, they, don't, they don't fish as good. They don't clean as good. They don't eat as good. Wintertime. You know, early spring, winter is, is crappie time. Uh, but we have messed with them this week a little bit. We messed with some today just to see, you know. And obviously, we're, we're throwing two different baits at them. Uh, obviously, we're throwing that Easy Shiner, little three-inch Easy Shiner on an eighth-ounce head. Trying to throw it past them. Uh, if we see a big school of them, let it sink past them and bring it up through them. Uh, today, I was throwing this. <clears throat> a little, uh, uh, I'm, I don't know the color, yeah, it's called Shad. This is made by that Living, Living the Dream crappie jigs. Um, and I use them a lot. This is more similar to like a Bobby Garland, uh, just a straight tail. But this one, that, that little tail has a lot more accent. And this is a identical shad color. It's got a little purple hint, pearly, translucent. Um, and you rig that on a little little eighth or sixteenth ounce head, and this is perfect for vertical jigging. And that's what we we're doing today. We found some brush and some treetop tree, actually standing trees, and those trees came up to about thirty-five foot of water deep for us. Yeah. And I dropped that jig all the way down, watched it on a live scope, <laughs> watched it go all the way down, and you know right above that uh, that tree, and I started lifting it up. And I seen them fish. Here they come. And I'm like, there they are. And I pulled it, let it go back down to them. And I just started reeling it real slow up, like as if it was getting away. And they came up and grabbed it. And I caught several really nice crappie today on this little living the dream, little straight tail uh, crappie jig. Uh, I was throwing a 16th for a while. Uh, but getting down that deep, you needed to get down there pretty quick and pretty straight without that wind blowing your line and moving your bait off of your target. So, you know, obviously I throw the lightest I can get away with, um, but I ended up going to an eighth ounce head uh, on the same bait and let it get straight down to them so I could, you know, get down straight to them, keep my line tight and, and watch them. Uh, there's a lot of crappie up underneath some of these big docks, big schools of them, um, and we're either catching them, doing the same two baits, or something else I like to do this time of year is throw, it's a three quarter ounce, it's an inch and a half long, uh, War Eagle makes one. Um, what's uh, Tom's company? Uh, Dixie Shad. Oh yeah. No, yeah, Dixie, Dixie Jet. Dixie, Dixie Jet yes. makes one. Um, there's a couple different variations. 
either chrome color white spoons and you know you just throw them out there let them sink all down to these deeper fish and rip them up off there let them go past your target rip it up by them condo docks excellent way to catch crappie in the summer put them big spoons on there drop it just let it go straight to the bottom as soon as it hits the bottom get it going so you don't get hung up and just reel that thing about four or five times stop it rip it up let it sink down rip it up sink down nothing reel it up a few more times and go through that same uh action until you catch a fish or two and then you know what depth they're at you can drop down and catch plenty with a spoon right now it's one of my best ways favorite ways to catch big crappie in the summertime these big docks big condo docks big cruiser docks you can flip that spoon back in there alongside these uh boat lifts let that thing flutter down and over the top of one of them poles or them, uh, the bars that hold them lifts let that thing sink down there and rip it up over it and you're going to catch some big crappie and that's how you catch the big ones right now uh, is like that you know so if you're on a condo dock or you're on a big cruiser dock or a big main lake dock you might just try a, a spoon like that um, or you know you can try crappie jigs but the spoon um, just gets a lot of good reaction bites so man we about we about covered it you know obviously your your worms are working in breast piles you know, she's throwing a, a finesse worm uh, which is a longer one a little mag finesse works good you know a little seven inch berkeley power worm in um, you know tequila sunrise purple blue fleck uh, that works really good for a lot of bites just drag it through that brush just drag it across the rocks you know um, those baits are, are catching plenty of, of baits right now the brush hog the brush hog starting uh, as you see more bigger shad around these big docks just a full-size brush hog texas rig flipping it in alongside these in these dock slips along these shallow dock corners anywhere you're seeing big shad that uh, big brush hog is a, a real productive bait um it's probably just starting maybe that's more september as we get into september so we'll talk more about that but you know the, the lake is slowing down but like she said we've got the shootout is, is that this weekend next weekend next weekend yeah 24th yeah the 24th mm -hmm. is the shootout so obviously that's a busy weekend down here and that's up there by hurricane deck bridge um, will be the shootout. Um, what else we got going on? Um, then we got a holiday, the first of September, oh, Labor Day. Labor Day. Labor Day. Yeah. So those will be busy weekends, busy weeks. But during the week, if you can get down here, it's pretty calm. Yeah. Now the weekends are are slowing down a little bit. Uh, there's obviously still a lot of people out here, but uh, you can get out, you can fish. You've got a good main lake bite. But the good thing about this time of year, when it gets rough out there, just go back in one of these big no-wake creeks or coves, and you can fish halfway back, all the way to the back, and still catch plenty of fish without all the big waves uh, back in these big no-wake coves. So that's what's good about fall fishing. You know, you start getting just as many fish towards the back. So, you know, uh, obviously, uh, restaurants down here, we got... So many good restaurants, little restaurants, big restaurants, family-owned restaurants, small restaurants. Obviously, we're on the west side, so we visit a lot of them. You know, I was, we were over at uh, Bentley's uh, the other evening, over there on, uh, uh, what is that, uh, Business 54, I believe it is. You got Baxter's, JB's, Bentley's, three really, really nice restaurants, super service. We like Bentley's over there. But we, we favor more the west side because we live over here, you know. So um, we've been visiting a couple of new ones, uh, trying to get out of it. There's a new one, newer. It's uh, called the West Side Pub. It's between Sunrise Beach and Lori. Right before you go in Lori, uh, if you're coming, going north on 5, it's on your left-hand side. It's kind of a small place. It's West Side Pub. Excellent food. Uh, excellent service. I mean, they're burgers. Um, it's not a big menu. It's more bar style. I think they got pizzas. They got uh, bacon lettuce, tomato sandwiches. They got, but they're not just bacon lettuce. They're 
They are nice. They're good. Their burgers are some of the best I've had. Their mac and cheese. Mac and good. cheese is probably one of their signature deal. Yeah. You go a little further up towards Lori, you got Vinny's. Uh, it's actually called Vinny's. What's little, it called little now? Vinny's. Little Vinny's. Little now, Vinny's. one of the best burgers I've had too down here. Vinny's is excellent. Uh, these little small places, you know, local businesses, local owners. The owners are in there. They're working. Excellent restaurants. Obviously, the, the Branding Iron, still one of our favorites. Amen. You know, uh, Elena in, in Branding Iron, she's going to take care of you. The whole staff's going to take care of you in Branding Iron. Yeah. <clears throat> They're one of the few places that has Crown Apple Black Blackberry. Blackberry. Crown Apple. So if you haven't tried that yet, run by uh, Branding Iron. Tell them we told you to come in there and get some Blackberry Crown. Blackberry Crown. And uh, that is excellent. You know, uh, breakfast places, dinner places, of course, chances are in Lori, uh, you're not going to get better food, portion, quality, and service, service mm -hmm. for the money anywhere at the lake, I would say, then chances are. Probably the best yeah. all around um, yeah. food, service, price. For your money is chances right. are they they've got it they've had it a long long time they're nothing new um, uh, they're right there in Lori you know um, uh, uh, CG's is a, is a good yeah you now get, breakfast yeah lunch uh, they make a lot of burgers chicken sandwiches mushrooms onion rings uh, CG's is a gas station over there across from Captain Ron's mm -hmm. uh, right next to Sport World Boat Center. Uh, so if you're looking at a boat at Gary's and want to think about it a little bit, go over to CG's, get you some breakfast, get you some lunch. They have Godfather's Pizzas, which is probably one of the best pizzas down here. You know, so CG's take care of you. Uh, it's a, it looks like a gas station, but you go in there, you'll see what we're talking about. Excellent food, more excellent service. You know, the West Side is all about uh, just food, service, um, your, your best friendly your best uh value for your yeah. money yeah. is the west side yeah. can't you know Val's restaurant up there uh probably one of the best breakfasts uh also around if you can get in there you know but um you know we got a lot of stuff on this west side uh down f road papa chubby's uh they're down f12 or f8 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 that's a happening place right there they always got live music uh, the place is full of people, uh, good drinks, food. That's uh, Papa Chubby's. I think they're open all year, too, aren't they? I think they are. They're open all year. One of the few places that's open all year. So uh, Papa Chubby's over here by water, I would say that's probably the 26-mile marker or so. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah. we got so much stuff over here on the west side. You don't have to be on that busy side all the time. Uh, you can come on the west side, yeah. get stuff to, to, to eat, you know, but... Uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the lake's just uh, fishing real good right now, and it's only going to get better. Uh, the fish we're catching are super healthy, super active. Uh, the lake in, is in incredible shape. Probably probably one of the, some of the best uh, conditions I've seen as far as fish and the healthiness. Um, I haven't seen any problem with any fish. So, great Great to hear, you know, as much pressure as we have here in tournaments, you know, but obviously the tournament anglers, they do their very best to take care of it, you know. Um, only other thing, uh, I've fished a couple of these uh, Ivy Bend River tournaments out of the wet spot at the 59 and a half. What a cool, what a cool time. I fished the last couple of them. I think they only got three left, but they're on Thursday and they're on Sundays. You can look at Facebook, look at Ivy Bend um, tournaments on Facebook, and uh, it takes out of the 59 mile marker at a restaurant bar called The Wet Spot. And they usually have, I don't know, 12 to 20 boats, um, but it's a lot of fun. You start anywhere on the lake, work your way to there, and then weigh in. Uh, pretty neat concept. Uh, just a bunch of good guys talking having fun, visiting, nothing too serious, but uh, you never know who's going to show up and fish them. So uh, you might show up and think you're fishing the Bassmaster Classic with who's there, but it doesn't matter. It's all about fun, 
and having fun. So if you're looking for a tournament up that way, you know, obviously we've got a lot of stuff coming up. The bass is coming up. A lot of stuff in September. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> we won't just keep going on this. But, uh, <laughs> you know, obviously <clears throat> you need service both down here. Our friends at Sport World Boat Center at right there below, uh, above Hurricane Deck Bridge. They've been there 20 years, 25 years. They're not going nowhere. Uh, they've been a, a bass boat dealer for 25 years or so. Uh, Vexus now um, and, and service, excellent service. They've uh, We've had some uh, uh, foot, foot pedal issues uh, this last week with Denise's boat. And they, they're doing everything they can to get us in and get this taken care of. Obviously, we need our boats. We need them every day for guiding upcoming tournaments, whatever it is. So, uh, you know, go see Sport World Boats and Gary, Luke, Alec, uh, all the guys in there. Uh, they'll do everything they can to take care of you. Uh, if you're in a new boat market, uh, they got aluminum boats. They got fiberglass boats. They got the new uh, VXS Vexus. Uh, which is going to be a, a big player in the bass boat industry. Uh, <clears throat> everyone already knows Vexus has the best ride on the war on the water, hands down. Um, and they they've made some slight improvements to this S model. Um, go in and see that he's got a couple of them. Uh, they got a big uh, a ride wide variety of the aluminum boat, the aluminum Vexus, which is really popular down here too. So you know, Sport World Boat Center there, Hurricane Deck. Run in and see them guys, talk to them. You know, um, that's, that's, I mean, we can't say enough yeah. about them that's and right. how they take care of you. Uh, if you purchase a boat there, they will take care of you and uh, they'll service any other boats too. Yeah, they've you, been on the water to help us. On they the water. Made phone calls. They've mm -hmm. made, made phone calls to us, phone calls to the It's, dealer, just, it's you know, just like our restaurants everything. down here. The yeah. owner, operator, I don't care what industry you're in. If your owner works there, you're going to have better service. You're going to have better quality. You don't have to ask to talk to the manager, ask to talk to the owner. He's there. He's talking to you. So, you know, that's 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 our thought. So, anyway, uh, obviously, if Denise or I can help you down here on the lake, uh, if, you, if you're coming down and you just want to take anybody fishing just to catch fish, we can do that. If you're new to the lake and you've been fishing all your life, and you want to see different patterns, different styles, different techniques we use here at the Ozarks, we can show you that. We'll key you in on, on what's going on on any particular season. Uh, we fish here 12, 12 months of the year, uh, and, and we do everything there is in the book for fishing, catching bass, and catching crappie. Uh, we would be glad to take you out and, and show you a fun day on the water, just catching fish, learning new stuff, uh, whatever it is, uh, we can help you with. Uh, Denise, give her a call at 314-226-3099. You can call her. You can text her. Uh, give me a call at 573-204-9005. Call me, text me, email me at jdillbass at gmail.com. Uh, we can communicate however you want to communicate. Any questions? There's no silly questions. There's no bad questions. If you if you need to know something, you want to know it. That's a valid question. I don't care what it is. You call us. You text us, and we will we will help, uh, and we will answer that question however we can. Whether it be uh, about boats or water or ramps or restaurants or tackle or guiding, uh, fishing, whatever it is, however we can help you, just call us, text us, email us, and we will do everything we can. So. Uh, as things change, uh, they'll be changing a little more uh, aggressively as the water cools and fish start changing their patterns, getting more in the fall. So, um, yeah. other than that, we'll try to, uh, you know, get jump on here a little more often. We've just been real busy. It don't seem like it'd be that hard, but um, it does take a little effort, obviously, yeah. setting things up and, and going through and trying to give you a good quality, up-to-date report that you can come to the lake and use yeah. uh, as we're giving it to you and catch fish. Obviously, that's our goal. So uh, please leave us a comment, any kind of comment, good, bad, request, feedback on our YouTube. 
we really appreciate it. It helps us uh, read those and then maybe uh, implement new things or different things mm -hmm. into our reports that will be clear, make more sense, or cover subjects that you might want to hear yeah. about. So, other than that, we appreciate you tuning in. Um, like I said, if we can help you, give us a call. Other than that, um, we will talk to you in a week or so. So. <clears throat>